Hey folks, Hal Sheriff here with Camp Constitution, and I am here with my lovely wife Mara in Oberlin, Ohio. And you are looking at a statue of one of my worthy ancestors, Giles Waldo Shirtliff. And uh, he was the man who organized uh, the Ohio 5th Regiment, which was an all-black regiment during the Civil War. So I'm going to read the inscription here. Uh, by the way, he was a um, student at Oberlin. He was friends with the president, um, who was part of the Second Great Revival and he later became a Civil War soldier, officer, general. So I'm going to read the little plaque here. Uh, and by the way, this statue originally was supposed to be uh, of um, the general handing a weapon to a former, to a, a black, a former slave. And he believed, and this is his, his quote, freedom cannot be given, it must be achieved. So here is the uh, front plaque and there's a one on the back as well. From 1831 to 1904, Giles Waldo Shirtliff, believing in the ability of the Negro to aid in the fight for his freedom, he organized the first regiment of colored troops raised in Ohio. Inspired by his leadership, they offered their lives for the freedom of their race. And he was very well respected, not only by his men, but by the parents, especially the mothers of his men, because he didn't allow drinking, cursing, gambling. Not to say it didn't happen, but he was very much against it. He was also a staunch abolitionist, but at the same time, unlike Sherman, he didn't want to destroy the South. You know, he, did, he wouldn't allow his men to burn farms and do a damage like that, which made him a little bit unique at that point, unfortunately. Um, so on the back here, it says here, for, so uh, Captain Company C, Oberlin Students, 7th Regiment, Ohio Volunteers, Infantry, 1861. Uh, prisoner of War, August 1861 to August 1862. So he spent a whole year. And at that point in the war, there was prisoner exchanges. Lincoln stopped doing that at some point. Uh, on staff of General Wilcox, 9th Army Corps, October 1862 to March 1863. Engaged in the Battle of Fredericksburg, December 1862. Lieutenant Colonel and Colonel 5th U.S. Colored Troops, July 1863, June 1865. Before Petersburg, this regiment lay two months in the trenches under daily fire. Nearly half its men were lost and he was severely wounded. In the charge of New Market, September 1864, Brevet Brigadier General, March 1865. And then, of course, he, the war ended um, shortly thereafter. So uh, he actually came back here as a professor and was very much beloved by the students. And this home, this building here, was his second home. Uh, this is now the Shirtliff Cottage Bed and Breakfast. In the town itself, this is just a short distance from the center of town, was his first house that he built. It is, uh, he, when he died, he, I understand he donated it to the college. And this one also was owned by the college. This one was sold, as I remember, and is now privately owned. It's a bed and breakfast, Shirtliff Cottage. And the one down in the, in the t center of town is the uh, County Historical Museum. And at that home, uh, he was visited by General Garfield, who became president, and also Frederick Douglass, who helped uh, Giles Shirtliff recruit uh, soldiers into his regiment. So uh, some proud history. In Oberlin, of course, like, most like most college towns, is a very liberal town, but somehow the statue remains undeterred. And, you know, they're tearing down statues, not just of Confederates, by the way. They're tearing down statues of abolitionists, and the goal is to wipe out the history. But we won't let that happen here. This is actually on, I believe, private property. Um, and the joke was... Uh, that the, he's pointing uh, to the bursar's office so students have to pay their tuition. That was the story here, you know, the joke. Anyway, uh, to learn more about Giles Sherlock, you can actually just go online and you'll see uh, some of his writings. Uh, just put in his name and you'll find some writings from the Historical Society. And I did a couple of videos several years ago when I came through here, a visit his grave site, and also I, I got a guided tour when I came here. I think it was about three or four years ago. Uh, the the historic museum the nice lady in the gift shop said oh we're not open for tours and i said oh i'm a shirtliff and she immediately called the director and she gave me a nice guided tour 
Uh, all, all, just, just the two of us. And that's uh, that guy that tours on our Camp Constitution YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. And to learn more about Camp Constitution, visit our website, campconstitution.net.